one to UNB. I first came to UNB in 1963. I have been uh, with the department from 1971 till 1998, which is uh, 1999 actually, which is uh, 30, uh, 28 years. Well, I was chairman of the department from 1971 to 1985. I came here from Poland. In 1972, I think, I, I became okay. a member of faculty. Mm. Okay. After I finished my doctorate at the uh, University of London in England, I came over as a postdoctorate fellow. A year later, I was in charge of the, uh, the uh, analytical plotter system at UNB which was a very large project and uh, essentially to introduce digital photogrammetry in Canada and the commercial world. Hmm. And uh, this is how I came to UNB. I consider myself really lucky to have had the opportunity to work at university with the, uh, the excellent students I had and the, the good research facilities I had. Mm. And that was very important for the success of my operation. Uh, in 1979, I got a phone call uh, from Peter Vanacek saying that there was an opening. I concentrated on mining problems and I got my PhD in rock mechanics with application to mining. And I've been here since uh, 1981. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm uh, a professor in the department and I became the chair of the department uh, in 2002. I was fortunate enough to join the department first as a, as a research associate in 1993. I came here uh, quite a long time ago, it was uh, 1998. I came here also from Germany, yeah. here, and of course from China to Germany. The chair of ocean mapping here at the uh, Department of Geodesy and Geomatics Engineering at UMB. My full name is Marcelo Carvalho dos Santos and I'm original from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. In 2000, I came to UNB uh, along with the Millennium Bug and I've been here for 10 years. And I've been a little bit involved with the founding of the department. I was chairman of the Publications Committee looked after the Canadian surveyor, now called Geomatica. And I suggested a special issue on education. And the president of the institute at that time was also director of the surveys and mapping branch, Sam Gamble, said, let's go further than that. Let's have a special meeting, a colloquium. And he'd been, he'd then sort of we agreed on that. And then he, was at a conference in England, and he met Professor E. H. Thompson from, I think, a college in London, I think it was Imperial College, and uh, who was chairman of a civil, who was a photogrammetrist, a brilliant one. In fact, he was Dr. St. Madry's supervisor for his PhD, but uh, he was, although he was a photogrammetrist, he was chairman of a civil engineering department. And he came up with the expression that civil engineering was applying the dead hand on surveying. So the climax came in the open discussion, a good sized room, well over a hundred people uh, for, open, for a question and answer session. And Ira Beatty, who was then the uh, head of civil engineering here, but he was, it was fairly recent, he'd just been ahead for two or three years. He's a young, good-looking young man. Stood up and he had a slightly husky voice and he said, I'm one of those terrible civil engineers. <laughs> <laughs> and this sort of brought the house down. But he said, we, I think we can do something about this. And of course, what he was referring to was the fact that they had already hired Canesti and Canesti had made it clear that he was not going to just teach surveying to civil engineers, either they were going to move ahead with surveying or he wouldn't be staying. Mm. And uh, <clears throat> so the illustrious, uh, notorious, whichever you prefer, 
train trip because travel was more by train than by air those days. Mm -hmm. uh, four of them had a compartment and a bottle of rum, and they connected me with a wonderful stamina for both he could uh, hold his rum and keep a clear head. Mm -hmm. And he persuaded the other three for his vision of what the, what could be a department. Mm -hmm. In 1964, uh, there were already three faculty members. Really, one was the main, was Dr. Gottfried Konetsny, who established our department in 1960 as a surveying program with the with civil engineering. At the time, we were only three professors, Dr. Gottfried Konetsny and Dr. Peter Wilson, and myself. And uh, of course, to teach geodesy and surveying and photogrammetry, it used to be a hell of a teaching load. Very demanding teaching load. And apart from that, at the time, the salaries were not very good. Uh, I wanted, I should have been active here as a research assistant for three thousand dollars, not a month, but a year. And uh, so they, they, they told me, uh, well, you have to teach, but then, when, then we give you a hundred thousand dollars more. So I got four thousand dollars a year to teach and to be assistant and to be, well, to do everything. Comparing uh, the department now with uh, uh, the, the, I guess the, 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 the stage uh, as of uh, 20, 30 years ago, they seem to be doing a good job. Uh, we were, I guess, uh, putting more emphasis on the theoretical, on the foundations, on the theoretical parts of. Uh, 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 survey, which uh, of course is geodesy and uh, adjustments, mathematics and uh, physics and all that. Uh, we always believed that uh, uh, that was the, the, the basis for uh, the reputation of the department because the students were, were well prepared uh, in, in, in the basics. On the other uh, end of the spectrum, we had uh, uh, the uh, applications, uh, which were uh, very well covered by uh, Professor Ksanowski and his, uh, his team. Uh, and again, that uh, got a little thin uh, in, the, in, uh, in the recent past. The emphasis now is uh, more on I guess uh, computer stuff as uh, can be uh, expected, but uh, uh, the, uh, the the total coverage that uh, we used to have, I think, uh, has been uh, narrowed down a little bit. Yeah. As a result of my work in uh, digital photogrammetry, I started two courses in digital mapping and GIS at UNB in the late 60s and they were uh, referred to as Digital Mapping 1 and Digital Mapping 2 and Concepts of GIS. I was contacted by some friends at the Canadian Hydrographic Service saying they had bought these new sonars called multi-beam sonars mm -hmm. and they were drowning in data. They didn't understand uh, how they worked and they thought that this was a, a very good problem for a department like the UNB Department of, uh, of Geomatics to, to research. have a look at and uh, would we be interested in setting up a research on this. Mm. And that was the beginning of uh, the organization of the Ocean Mapping Group. The geomatics, the name, came quite late. It came on the 19, uh, about 1995, nine, yes, something like that. I think the key is hard work, and it was a unique combination of a, a, a commitment to high standards and expectations, but also a tolerance for different perspectives. The faculty here at this department was extremely dedicated. It started with Dr. K, who was uh, 
and a very well-known photogrammetrist and later remote sensor. Mm. Pushed the people to uh, be active internationally, brought in, as you know, the faculty, uh, various international backgrounds. And these people, with their inter international connections, if, uh, friends who came to visit UNB, mm. we had guest professors here, and we went out and, uh, you know, wow. ramped up the business. Probably the event that uh, shaped the department, according to my, uh, my opinion, uh, was uh, the, the conference that uh, we uh, staged here with uh, Professor Kakiski mm -hmm. um, in 1974 was the conference on the redefinition of uh, North American networks and uh, there were lots of people who came in here and dealt uh, good papers, uh, proceedings which were sort of uh, cited, quoted long after the event. And we had marvelous leadership. Mm. Uh, Professor Angus Hamilton, who was the chair of the department in those days, really represented our department at its best. The way he brought us together, I mean, he shaped this uh, uh, shared vision, and as I say, uh, built the, without question, the strongest department in the world. And to be part of that was, I'll always treasure that, that, that was just a, a central part of my life. Through the research at UNB on the analytical plotter, uh, there's many projects worked out very well for me and, uh, and for my students at the time, and uh, many good results uh, we, uh, were achieved in uh, the latest in technology, in digital mapping and correlation and so on. Uh, so one of the projects we worked on was the two media photogrammetry whereby you fly area photography and you try to delineate the bathymetry from the area photography. And um, this was about 1972. And as a result, the Canadian Hydrographic Service awarded the university a first size contract for the, called the Aerial Hydrography Project, which incorporates aerial camera, inertial navigation system, and the laser bathymeter at the time, mm. a LADAR. And that resulted in a very large uh, number of people working on the project to get to uh, be completed. The uh, Canadian Hydrographic Service, together with another company, a company uh, out from Ontario, wanted us to have a, a very big contract to complete the project. And that contract had a number of liability clauses, which the university at the time was not set up to sign. So one of the ideas to, to get the contract was to form a company. So in 1979, I formed a company which was referred to at the time as Universal Systems, but uh, which is now known as Keras. And that company took on the contract and signed it so we could continue the work. After the contract was finished, uh, there was a number of ideas uh, came out from my research and then I wanted to have them they develop as industrial uh, ideas mm. but there wasn't many companies which would take on the development of these ideas and bring them to, to the be utilized in industry mm. so I thought of myself that we could do that could, the company could do that and since that time we started CARES software which is now used worldwide in the hydrography, at least, and if not in other areas. Uh, the first office uh, for the company was in 1983, and we set the office up at uh, downtown Fredericton so that we could continue with our industrial uh, work mm -hmm. uh, separate from UNB, and at uh, the same time uh, allow us to continue to help the university with the research carrying out check it out at UNB itself. Mm. So uh, then in 1983 actually, CARES was awarded a contract to provide the system for the old maritime provinces which was under the Council of Maritime Premiers mm. to do the photogrammetric mapping of all the Atlantic provinces. Mm. 
So that was in 1983, which was the first size contract, and that gave the company the boost to start to be quite independent and hire more people separately from the university or who finished, graduated from UNB. Mm. So it was very uh, stimulating because uh, ideas and research at UNB could be developed and uh, industrialized by the company. Mm. And it gave me a complete sense of satisfaction mm. that ideas at UNB could be used for an industry. And since then, we have had many graduates from UNB hired by the company. So we have in uh, all, all together about 180 employees, uh, 145 of them in Fredericton, and the rest are in offices around the world. And uh, with God's help, we'll continue to grow. And we're very, very grateful to all the students who helped us out and now became employees. We have some of the original employees with the company stay still with us at the moment and uh, after so many years later about 20 some years there's still employees good employees working for the company and producing and very happy amazing so i'm very grateful to you and b for all the for the excellent opportunity i'd like also to thank my family for putting up with me for many long hours for some time i was carrying two jobs one at university and one in the company mm. and that was too much and uh, so I'd like to thank my children and my wife. I have also Mark and Emily working with me in the company and doing an excellent job. So I'd like to specifically thank them. Mm. I'd like to thank all the students who contribute good ideas to the, my research and to the success of the company. Mm. I was lucky to have many of them working in my operation. Mm. So it's wonderful. So I have been very lucky indeed to have had all these good opportunities. I would like to thank the Department of Surveying and Mapping, Surveying Engineering, I should say, which is now referred to the Department of Geomatics and Geodesy, and I uh, wish them all the success and many happy returns for their 50, 50th anniversary. Um, geodesy, the concept, is one of the books you see all over the world. Can you tell us what inspired you to write that awesome Geodesy book? Uh, <clears throat> well, uh, actually, it was my co-author, Professor Krakowski, who came up with the idea, because we published a lot of uh, textbooks and, uh, and uh, um, technical reports within the department, and uh, he thought that it would be nice to sort of put it all together and uh, uh, make a book out of it. My suggestion was to write it from scratch, uh, and we did. We started back in 19, I think it was 73, and uh, we finished it, uh, I guess the first edition came out in 1982. At present, uh, I'm involved in many industrial projects. I, I analyzed the the formations and behavior from the structural point of view, from the safety point of view, and also economical point of view. Extraction, Extraction of the oil and gas on the surface and also on environment. Uh, to help or to, to introduce these problems to graduate students and undergraduate students. I teach right now the course Integrated Analysis of the Formations. This book gives the background in uh, continuum mechanics as well in some uh, basics of finite element method and this can be helpful for graduate and uh, undergraduate students to to have a background in deformation analysis and physical interpretation. How do you see the research quality and the students I mean, in the department now and before? Is there some change? Good. There, there, there have been changes. We, we attract some really good students from right around the world. Right. The requirements have changed. For example, uh, PhD students here back in the 1960s and 70s right. had to uh, Learn um, uh, another language as uh, right. as one of their uh, their PhD requirements. Um, 
they still have to uh, complete the general examinations as part of this. Um, so we still have very, very high standards and we're proud that our students still deliver. Okay. So do you think the students now are better than before? I think that uh, students have uh, had changed over time. Right. They, they certainly have a broader appreciation of, uh, okay. of what's going on in, uh, in many respects. Right. But I, I think that uh, we've been lucky with good students throughout. We see you as president of UMB. <laughs> we've had one. We've had one uh, uh, serving engineer who's been uh, president of, uh, of UMB. Maybe people think that's enough. What's your plan for the DG in the next 50 years? My plan is yes. to uh, make sure we engage, or to, to to help my colleagues make sure that we engage the best people that we can right. going forward, who will continue to help redefine what uh, what geomatics means in uh, in uh, Canada and, uh, right. and around the world. It's yeah. the people that make the difference. Geomatics engineering students should have this background in other applications. Most of the time they will be cooperating with other engineers. So to really gain respect and feel good and to know that they can really work to the best of their knowledge is to have the background in these areas. One of the uh, major satisfactions and benefits of being a teacher is to see what the alumni have done to change the world after they have left the university. And we've had many, many alumni who have made major changes to the way the world is uh, run, not just in geomatics, but in other fields as well. One of the uh, receivers that we uh, run is dedicated to providing data to the uh, U.S. Weather Service for input into uh, weather forecast. One of the big things is our track record of doing research that impacts on society. Mm. Mm. And uh, most of our, our, our professors spend a lot of time in other parts of the world mm. um, uh, working with various groups, uh, whether it's sovereignty in the Arctic, mm. with ocean mapping, mm. whether it's uh, redefining the datum in Brazil or in mm. Africa mm. Uh, and it adds a lot of practical work mm. and we bring that back into the classroom. As you may not be aware every two years we're assessed for research by the university and they started doing this in, in the early 80s actually. Mm -hmm. They would grade every department for research mm -hmm. and ever since they've been doing it, well one of the top rankings in the university and this year, mm -hmm. they introduced a new ranking that would only give to one department on each on each uh, campus, which is a one-star ranking. Mm. And they introduced that for the first time this year. And who did they give it to, Patrick? Did you? It was us! <laughs> <laughs> and when I took over as chair in 2002, one of the things Dave Coleman said uh, to me is, make sure you do not lose that number one ranking. Mm. And I thought, well, the only way you're, your problem is you're at the top. There's only one way to go, yeah. either stay there or go down a bit. I didn't realize they were going to use another ranking, we still go up. We deserve that because, and, and the, the extra bonus this year, because mm. we have had a track record that is, is fabulous compared to many, many other fields, other universities, and everything else. I think the department has been consistent over the years in maintaining a very high caliber both in its teaching and its research. Yes, professors have, uh, have uh, come, and, come and gone, gone. Yeah. Um, but we've always managed to have a, a, an excellent uh, cadre of, uh, of professors who not only were dedicated to teaching uh, but also to research. If, if you were asked to particularly point out something that you think has been left out in um, the GG program, what would, you point, what would that be? Well, see, I'm a geodesist, so I'm, <clears throat> I'm, I'm not a geomagician. Ge I still don't know what the yeah. word geomatics <laughs> really means. And, uh, I'm, a, I'm a geodesist and I, I, I know what that means. And it, uh, it is, uh, uh, it's uh, sort of mostly math and physics. But on the other hand, uh, they, they seem to be doing a, a good job of uh, 
GIS as the soft part of the spectrum. Which is what language geomatics is all about. Yeah. <laughs> it appears to me that it's uh, more uh, that we're sort of uh, tending more towards geography, uh, towards uh, sort of uh, uh, showing nice pictures. But uh, which way uh, is the profession going to go, or which way should it go? I really don't know. Uh, yeah, we haven't, uh, haven't uh, sort of uh, tackled this uh, problem for a, for a long time. It's, you know, we used to gather the whole uh, department in Professor Hamilton's uh, home in the evenings and we would be discussing uh, everything concerning the profession for uh, really months and months um, over of course, a few bottles of whiskey and stuff. <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, at the end, I think we came to a, a, an understanding of where the profession is going and where it should be going, and we try to sort of push in that direction. I'm not sure what, what we should uh, what we should do now. Uh, I think we still uh, give a very high quality contribution to the uh, to the state of the art. And uh, we have probably the best graduate students that uh, that uh, we can can possibly find, and uh, and we still uh, do uh, maintain our, our good record and good reputation. And uh, and I hope that uh, uh, we uh, we uh, go uphill and uh, keep going uphill. I. In my opinion, I think probably the may, one of the major achievements of the department is actually the impact it's had on geomatics in Canada. I think, I think the, the impact of our students when they leave on the development of the profession in Canada, both in industry and in government, has been enormous. And you look across, across Canada uh, and international, I think the employment of our students and what they've done to the profession is really one of the biggest impacts we've had over, over 50 years, mm. both in industry and in education. So. For the last 10 years, uh, we have developed six different uh, new technologies which have been used by industry. Mm. Oh, and uh, we have developed five patents, US patents. What's actually happened is we've taken on unintentionally a mapping role. We do all the teaching, all the research, but our major field programs are running mapping systems, both coastal with the Heron, our beautiful inshore survey vessel, and more importantly for the nation, in the Arctic. We run the Amundsen's survey systems, multi-beam sub-bottom, and all the positioning and associated oceanography that goes with that. And we've run it now for seven years, and that's expanding. And that's really, in, since the turn of the century, we've become the de facto mapping capability in Canada's Arctic, and I include the government. The government has no capability. The only capability is within a consortium of universities, the ArcticNet NCE, and all that mapping's run through here. So we've had graduate students doing theses at the same time as collecting scientific data for geologists, biologists, oceanographers, and um, it, it's great because what it's allowed our students to do is become aware of needs other than the old uh, model of nautical charting. Other thing that uh, I, th yeah, I think it was a has been worthwhile is the development of a precise point positioning package. Uh, so I had a, a, a PhD student of mine, uh, Rodrigo Leandro, who, uh, who started work on these and uh, he developed, he built a program that's called GAPS, which is online now and it's available uh, and used uh, everywhere in the world, and uh, and uh, there has been lots of uh, work that uh, this package has uh, uh, was capable of. It's nice to see what other graduate students are up to. 
So far, we've seen some very interesting uh, uh, topics here and very good presenters at UNB. I like the presentations. They're all very timely subjects affecting the professional surveying today. Um, boundaries, coordinates, wetlands, um, high-end technology, everything is very pertinent. It's very, very interesting subject matter. And I look forward to uh, working with these young people in the future. try and expose students to uh, different geotechnologies that we use in our department. So one of which, of course, is GPS. So what we did here is we did uh, sort of like a GPS navigation exercise. I am the graduate secretary, so I help all of the graduate students when they enter into our program. Um, I'm the first contact. We try to get you in and get you out. <laughs> I love my job. I love the students. I do have the best students on campus of any university. <laughs> um, the students are my job and I work for you, I work with you, and I have a fantastic bunch to work with. I love it. GG is a, it's a small but wonderful department. Mm -hmm. It's uh, the culture is very diverse. Mm -hmm. I really enjoy the students that we get from from all over the world, mm -hmm. and um, they are always very, very, very kind and respectful. And uh, I get to learn new things from them. I really enjoy that. Financially, always we will always make sure that the students are taken care of. Great. Yes, everything is uh, GGE strives to make sure that things are, are uh, covered for the students as much as we can. But, you know, in these financial times, fiscally, sometimes it can be difficult. So, but we try and do the best that we can. This is to the chair, Peter. And just keep everybody up to date and in the loop. Um, I know we all have accents um, from Africa, from Asia. How, how are you able to understand students when they are talking to you? The, uh, my previous job I dealt with a lot of uh, foreign accents as well. Um, I dealt with it over the phone on a hundred times a day, so this is, is much easier. Okay. Hi, I'm Terry Arsenault, Level 1 Computer Support. I um, take care of the computer needs of everybody in the department. I take care of the department website, uh, install software, uh, fix some hardware, uh, I do the mail, I uh, fix the audiovisual equipment sometimes, and whatever else they, they ask me to do. Good day, my name is Jay Woodyear, and I am the equipment technologist for the Department of Geodesy and Geomatics Engineering here at UMB. I'm also involved with uh, different research projects that our graduate students and undergraduate students are doing. I also help out with instruction with our introductory labs. I'm involved in safety, a very important uh, aspect of, of industry and our field work, and also recruitment. So come on on to our department and uh, join us and see what all the fun is about. GG, I mean, what a faculty. Just think of what we can do with all this knowledge that we've got here. Like a, uh, uh, a pyramid of knowledge. Yeah. What are your chances of this? from here, you get 100% chance of getting a job after. 100%. Great. But we need more girls in the program. Uh, the future of uh, surveying or future of geomatics engineering is great. In Canada, we have only four departments and a lot of industrial projects, a lot of applications, so the, the future is tremendous. The same in the world right now with the growing uh, economical growth, with the structural engineering growing. Right now also is quite a demand for graduates from geomatics. Engineering. So I would say that the choice is great. The applications are unlimited, so everything depends 
of the individual. I know you are very good in terms of um, politics and engineering and stuff like that. Are we, are, we, are, we, are we looking at the next senator from GDA? I think you have the composure, you have the knowledge, you have the vision and... Um, well, that, that would be really cool, you know, like to be able to contribute to the community in that way. So uh, I hope that happens. So when that, when, so when, when that happens, fall out of a plane or something like that. Great. Yeah, so when <laughs> when that happens, what will your your experience in GGE? What will that experience come to play during that time? That's a good question. I think yeah. uh, engineering gives you skills that uh, that you, you can use in almost any situation. Okay. Um, I mean, the stereotypical thing is with, uh, with problem solving, but just good work ethic, really. And the ethics behind engineering, it's really, really been a great learning experience. Finally, I would like to, uh, to wish all friends of the department, colleagues and everybody a happy 50th anniversary. Happy 50th anniversary from me and my assistant. I would like to wish everybody all the best, all the success and I hope we'll meet in another 50 years. <laughs>